welcome back to the workbench where today we're going to take a look at a bit of an old controller by Fleischmann the MSF Trafo 6735 and my friend Zach put me onto these uh, as he uses them and finds them excellent so I've connected it up at the back here we've got the little oscilloscope and the voltmeter and a resistance load and as you can see it says MSF and then we have an MSF which I assume is range from 0 round to 120, 130 and it well I thought it was just going to be half wave and then switch into full wave but let's just start turning the controller up and see what we see so straight away we're at the low end we've got 2.3 volts and you can see there a half wave 50 Hertz ripple uh, DC voltage but notice between the peaks there is something else now if I increase the controller a little more do you see what's happening so we're up there now and the voltage has gone up to 3.6 but we've now got the other half of the half wave making full wave <laughs> funnily enough starting to appear between the 50 Hertz peaks let's go on a little bit more and you can see without doubt it is bringing it in very carefully and uh, it, it what it means is that your half wave only actually occurs at very low output so it doesn't really do much harm to your motors not good for callers still but um, most other motors would tolerate that because you're very low power and then as you increase the speed you're moving away from full half wave to sort of half half wave half half wave <laughs> you're moving towards full wave now look um, I'm coming towards the end of the range now and I'll just keep turning up and you will see that the peaks will meet but the voltage is very smoothly ramped up and now you're at full wave so that's all four diodes of the bridge rectifier working and then you just go on up increasing in voltage in full wave it's extremely clever I know that it's a variable transformer like the safety miner but what it must have is separate diodes for the bridge rectifier and separate uh, wipers on the transformer for those diodes to do what it's doing so I've got to, I've changed the load over for a loco sorry that's just my meter switching itself off I have my old trusty Hornby 08 ready and let's see how it controls okay so here's the 08 I'm just going to gradually increase and look at that excellent performance now that's half wave but very low voltage you can hear a little bit of growl as we go on up I've just moved it back so you can see it working as we move on up through the range she stays smooth and the reason being we're going to reverse the polarity is we're nearly full wave and if I carry right the way through we just get to full wave but at low power it's half wave plus a little bit of full wave creeping in you just see those peaks beginning to appear as we move out of half wave completely I mean I'm right next to her a little bit of buzz but that's not normal half wave is it
Anyway, I think we should have a look inside the controller and see if we can see how it does this. These controllers are held by little plastic pegs that must be withdrawn before you can open it. And the best way to do that using the little slot provided with a small screwdriver is just to flex the case until the peg pulls out and then you can use pliers to remove it. So you can see here that I've levered that and the peg can be just withdrawn and put aside. I'll do that with the other three. So all the pegs have been removed. Now that's just the control knob. And here we have the controller itself. So if I just simulate that, you can see that there are wipers there moving on the inside of this winding. This is the part of the transformer, the low voltage side, which is why it's variable voltage controller rather than a rear stat or resistance. You can see that there's various tracks and wipers here as well. Just inside here we have a big diode, diode 5, which produces the half wave signal. And then we have the four diodes, you can just see in there, smaller, of the bridge rectifier. Now I've just uh, persuaded it to part with its secrets. Here's the first set of wipers, which will be normally in there. And they will give you your half wave. Now there's the second set of wipers that are just visible there. I can't get them all the way out without risking breaking it. But they'll be identical to them. And that's your um, wipers that are connected to the next set of diodes to start giving you your full wave rectification, but gradually. Very clever. What a cunning idea. So you might reasonably ask how the controller is doing this. Well, the first thing we need to understand is the variable transformer. This is a diagram of a transformer. The primary coil connects to your mains, 230 volts AC goes to a secondary coil which is bigger and uh, it steps down the voltage now all all, beg your pardon, all transformers can be tapped with reference to their um, common so if you took a tap there with just a few coils of the secondary side you might get 5 volts AC if you moved up there you get 7 10, 12, 14, maybe 18 volts at the top, depending on the transformer. Now, instead of tapping the coils, what you do is you have a brush that um, moves up and down against the coils. And this is how a safety miner works. So you can basically infinitely vary the voltage by selecting different positions on the secondary coil. Here's a diagram of a variable transformer connected to a bridge rectifier. Note also the fifth diode. You remember when we looked at the circuit board there was a larger single diode and then the four smaller ones. That's what you're seeing here. Initially as the wiper of these two arrows moves along the secondary coil of the transformer using the control knob. The fifth diode on its own is connected. This produces your half wave that we see as the half wave spikes. Progressively as you turn the control knob the full wave bridge rectifier becomes introduced. And this fills in the gaps until you get a full wave signal. And this diode is then switched out cleverly using the track circuit in the controller. And that's how it's working. Very clever. Zero on the controller. Gradually increasing. The fifth diode is now in circuit providing a half wave output. As I gradually increase the controller, the other wiper is engaged on the secondary of the transformer and is filling in between the half wave, making a 100 hertz sine wave appear. 
It's also taking up the same space as the half wave diode, but you don't see that because the half wave diode is at a higher voltage. Gradually increasing the controller, and you can see the bridge rectifier is now almost fully involved. The, the, the fifth diode producing the half wave is about to be switched out of circuit. You see the change there. I wonder if I could. There, look, that's just between the two. And then I carry on increasing. And we now are on the bridge rectifier fully. The half wave fifth diode is switched out of the circuit. And we can increase the voltage further. Let's go down. And we should see the same thing but in reverse. There we go, we're at the switching point now. So at this point, both the fifth diode and the full wave bridge rectifier are in circuit. And now, gradually, the bridge rectifier is less and less in circuit, or receiving less power from the transformer. But diode number five is still working and producing voltage for our trains. And then, just before we switch off completely, you see that the 100 hertz signal is almost vanished. Basically, a rectifier takes the AC signal and turns it into DC. This is the AC, rising and falling, rising and falling, alternating current, 50 times a second. Now for half wave, what it does is take half that waveform. You see the bottom part here is missing. So this would be 50 hertz between there. And that's your half wave control. If you have a full wave rectifier, what it does is it takes this piece that was missing, the bottom half, and flips it up to the top. So you now have 100 hertz full wave control. And that's normally the preferred for DC control for our model trains.